now it's time to actually start working with the song a little bit. So it begins on E. Now this is an important thing. I talked about the third being very, very important in the scales, major third versus minor third, and also chords, major third and minor third. What is very typical in the heavy metal genre, uh, genre, excuse me, um, is to not play the third in the chords, having roots only and fifths. Okay, so this in, in this case, this is E, which is going to be the root of our chord, our flat at third, fourth, fifth, which is B. And so you hear that chord a lot. You don't hear this. You don't hear this. You hear this. Now, what they like to start off with is they're going to go up to the bar chord here on E, which is on the seventh fret. If you don't know this form, you should really learn it. It's first finger on the fifth string on the seventh fret, third finger flattens out from the fourth string down, four, three, and two, popping the knuckle up so that you get a muted first string. You never want that first string to sound. Now, what's kind of cool about this, this is E, but this is also E, so we can make use of that open. So what he does here is he starts off with E, then he hits a single note. Now this is that flat at seventh. This is the root E. Root, flat at third, four, five, flat at seventh, which is the D, which is down here. So this is prominent throughout the whole song. If the, if the term flat at seventh is still making your head spin, just think of it as E down to D back to E. With the home bass, the center of the song still being on E. Now notice I do a technique where I don't want that E droning when I go down to the D. So I will use my thumbs to, I don't want that E, I don't want that sound. I just want that one single D. Now, um, notice I'm using vibrato on that note. Vibrato is really important to your sound and it takes a long time to kind of cultivate, at least it did for me. And there's different types of vibrato that's used in this song. And this is the most typical sort of form of rock vibrato. I'm actually kind of using my first finger as a kind of a pivot. And I'm pivoting back and forth. Now what I'm doing here is here's my D note. I'm sharpening it by pulling it and bringing it down to D. Sharpening it, bringing it down to D. And what you want to do is get control over that wrist movement so you're not, you know, you're not going too wild and crazy there. Um, and you always want to make sure to bring it back to D or the, the center piece of your, you know, tone is going to be sharp. And D is going sharp and then back to D. Sharp, back to D. Sharp, back to D. If you don't return it, you're going to be a little little out of tune with your bend because you're never going to return to D natural. So... It's pretty much accepted, and people have you know said they've seen him play it like that. It's up here instead of here on the fifth string. He's going for the tenth, uh, the sixth string, tenth fret. That's our D, our root fifth power chord D, no third. So D slide to E. This is tenth fret slide to twelfth fret. Now, you don't hear anything from the guitar at this point. It's all hi-hat. The drummer's controlling the tempo right now. What I do as a guitarist is I never really want to sit there and listen to the tempo and then come in. I want to feel it. This is just me and my personal um, preference. So if I was doing this, I would probably be muting on the string. So I don't lose that rhythm. I don't lose that tempo. Now, if it was verboten or forbidden to do that, 
that we, you know, if I was in a band that wanted to do it just like the record, I'd probably tap the guitar. Nobody would hear that. Nobody would hear the dog either. What he's doing is when he's working and we're doing the verse, the first four he doesn't do any embellishment. And the next one he does this one lick and it's, it's, um, it's phrased like two triplets and a triplet is three, um, three notes per beat. Da ba da da ba da da ba da da ba da. One two three. One two three. One two three. One two three. But he does the first five notes of the triplet, and the reason for that is he's got to give himself time to get back up to, and that's that's you know ten frets on the guitar. That's not a small distance. Classical guitar players use this all the time, using drone open strings to be able to get some distance on the guitar while you still have notes ringing. Okay, and the next one, he does a trill. Now a trill is uh, basically way, um, going back and forth between two notes. Typically it's a hammer on pull off on the guitar and it's generally done quickly. So it's almost an onomatopoeia to call it a trill. So we have... And again, when he, when he does the trill on the four string, he allows himself some, some drone time on the D. So there's three embellishments that he does. Then the trill. And then he does this. Now this is right out of the scale that I first showed you, the E minor pentatonic. Notice how everything stacks on this 12th fret. Every single um, line or you know every set of strings on this particular position comes to the 12th fret. There's, and so he does, he hits the third and second string together on the 12th fret, which is kind of a mini A chord, which is within that scale. Those first two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Okay, so it's two. Now notice I start counting on three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, three, four. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and so forth. So it goes, the first one goes one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And on the three is when you do. So you can even just maybe when you play with the recording, you don't even do the chords. You listen one, two. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So the first and the third come in at the same point on beat three after you have, you know, four measures of four. Um, the trill comes in on the first beat of that measure. In this part, he does. Um, when he, this is kind of like the bridge in between the, um, the, kind of the next verse. Goes chromatically, G, F sharp, F, E. 15th fret, 14th fret, 13th fret, 12th. Third string, 12th fret, wild vibrato on this one. So this uh, goes into kind of the next verse, and he's making a lot of use of the open E drone. And so he hits the third and second string on the 12th fret. So, 
What I do here is he's really hitting the G and putting a vibrato on it, but um, what what I feel like he's doing, what, it, what makes sense for me to do is I actually bend, I pull with my second finger because that's the one I'm comfortable with, I pull up to that G and I put a wild vibrato on it. Remember when I talked about vibrato, most vibratos go sharp and then back to the natural pitch and sharp and back to the pitch, sharp and back to the pitch. If you're scooping up to that note, you can actually have a wider vibrato that actually goes flat as well as sharp because I can go, I can't go flat. I can only go sharp if I go here, but if I scoop up to that G, the other guitar part is going down, uh, again, working with the E minor pentatonic in the O position. So, he's doing the same sort of scoop on the low note. So he's hitting the four string second fret, pulling off to open. So, so the first time he's only doing the pull off. And the second time he's doing the pull off, and he's doing that scoop, again, from the second fret to the third fret on the sixth string, I use my middle finger. Now, if you're having trouble with this kind of, this is a funky sort of rhythm. Here we are in the middle of a, of a you know, a, a heavy metal song, and he's doing this. So, one of the things I work on to build up the fundamentals to get that funk sort of thing going is, notice I don't jerk my hand, um, see if I can even emulate it. So I keep my hand moving in that rhythm. My hand's always going back and forth. My hand is my metronome. So I'm keeping this chucka 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 thing going. So, so let's slow it down. So I'm doing a downstroke every time I actually play a pitch. So those are the two parts kind of played back and forth.